he had a secret prison lover. Tomorrow, Dr. Phil's exclusive interview continues. It was reported he was gay. I asked him if it was true. What did he say? The rumors from prison. Reportedly, a man named Kyle Kennedy and Aaron were prison lovers, and they requested to share a cell. Do you believe that? The letters Aaron left behind. There were multiple writings. There was a letter for me. There's one addressed to our daughter. Was there a letter addressed to Kyle Kennedy? The exclusive interview on the same day the former football star's murder conviction was vacated. Did Aaron kill himself so you could collect $6.5 million? All new tomorrow. You do not want to miss that. For more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. Tune in tomorrow. Thanks for watching today. Breaking news right off the top to share with you. This is coming to us out of New Jersey. That is where a Learjet attempting to land at Teterboro Airport crashed in, in an industrial area in Karlstadt, New Jersey. That is just outside of New York City. Reports on the scene say that the pilot and co-pilot were killed in this crash. The plane, we're told, was coming from a Philadelphia airport when it went down. The crash sparked a whole lot of fires that crews are attempting to put out and get under control this evening. More on that story as it develops throughout the hour. A man confesses to killing a missing woman in from Prince George's County, but her body still nowhere to be found. We're talking about Turkisa Page. She's been missing for more than a month. Police say her boyfriend killed her after an argument and dumped her body in a dumpster. So now the search is on to find her remains and give her family closure. WUSA 9's Mike Valerio met with one of her relatives who opens up about the suspect and how they are all trying to heal. He was, he was a menace. He was just, he was just crazy. You know, he treated her like trash. Treated her like she was a piece of trash, like she was garbage. <sighs> we, we have a strong family, so you know, our family is real strong. God know where she at, you know, and we just, uh, uh, me and my family just want to leave her with some type of dignity, you know, a proper burden. We won't be able to give her her last viewing. You know, with her friends, family, and relatives. What was the purpose of you strangling her? Uh, real men, real men don't don't hurt women. You know, only sissies. So that was her uncle's response to the question. What would you say to the suspect in this case here? Bottom line, 35-year-old Michael Proctor faces first and second degree murder charges. He confessed to detectives, but no body. And worth noting, he also told police that he put her body in a storage bin and wheeled it out of his apartment. Leslie. Well, the details are just awful, Mike. Thank you. Police also say the victim is captured on surveillance, leaving an apartment complex on Wheeler Road. Uh, but you never see her again after that. He was hired to protect students at a local middle school, but tonight the head of security there is accused of getting way too close to a 14 year old girl. 21 year old Mike Anthony Leviano worked at Colonel Brook Lee Middle School in Silver Spring. He surrendered last night. Leviano is being held on $10,000 bond on charges that he had sexual contact with that teenage student. Another security leader, 57 year old Mark Yanso, said Richard Montgomery High School was arrested last month and he is accused of having an ongoing sexual relationship with a 17 year old female student at that Rockville school. Right now, two underage boys are facing charges after a vicious and unprovoked attack on Metro. And now the victim is looking for the Good Samaritan who jumped in to break up that fight. Delia Gonsalves is live outside Gallery Place Metro to tell us about the arrest and the hunt, Delia, for this hero who stepped in. That's right, John Rowley is very grateful today and wants to reach out and find this Good Samaritan out there. This attack all went down to the Gallery Place platform. It was Friday, 6 o'clock, a busy evening commute, much like it is right now. The hero jumped into the fight to break it up, took some blows himself, and Rowley tells me if it weren't for him, it would have been far worse. This was a totally unprovoked attack. There was nothing said to me. Um, and one jumped at me. He put his shoulder into my chest, tried to knock me down. Um, I took a step towards him as if to say, what are you doing? And at that point, 
Um, he, I think, took a punch at me. Others jumped me from behind. I was dragged down on the ground. The train, um, I believe the very same train that I had got, gotten off of, um, started to leave the platform, to leave the station and to accelerate. And I was pushed towards the train and I held up my right hand to stop my body from hitting the accelerating train. And that's, I think, when I broke it. I learned that there was um, a good Samaritan, a second year law student at GW Law School, who jumped in and he took some of the punches that no doubt were intended for me and he helped to break up the attack. And I'm afraid he got hurt himself. Um, but it would have been a whole lot worse for me if he hadn't been there. So I really, um, I, I, I don't have any contact information for him. I'd like very much to see him again and to thank him in person. He was one of the people that stopped and did something when he could have just walked on by. They need to prevent the next attack from happening before it does. Uh, if that means more police presence on the platforms, then they need to go ahead and do that. Because otherwise, Metro is going to be out of business because people like me are going to stop riding the subway. Back here live at uh, Chinatown Gallery Place, you can see a Metro officer stage right outside and some more downstairs. You know, uh, a Metro spokesperson says, and he agrees that this attack is very disturbing and concerning to him, but he says we already do have enough officers. In fact, there was an officer on the platform, followed the suspects on the train, rode the train with the suspects, arrested them two stops later at Union Station. He does say, that uh, the closed circuit cameras helped track down their suspects. We're live in Gallery Place, Delia Gonzalez, WUSA 9. Delia, yeah, thanks. Well, Metro is crediting their real time closed circuit cameras and the officer at the station for making the arrest. The two juveniles are now facing charges of aggravated assault. Three people were killed and another hospitalized after an accident that happened on the Suitland Parkway. It happened this morning near the intersection of Forestville Road. The crash had a major impact on rush hour traffic trying to get into Washington from Prince George's County. The names of the victims have not been released yet. And dozens of children were hurt today when a charter bus headed for D.C. overturned on I-95. This happened in the morning on the southbound lanes near the Hobart of Grace exit. One child and one adult were airlifted to the hospital. Police say it all happened when the driver of one car tried to pass the bus, lost control, and then ended up hitting that bus. And the children and their escorts were headed to Washington on a field trip from Philadelphia. Police are looking for the gunman behind a fatal shooting on I-95 in Richmond. 26-year-old Shireen Holland of Manassas and the female driver were killed when someone in a car pulled up alongside of them Sunday morning and opened fire. A man in the car also is being treated for life-threatening injuries. Friends say that man is Holland's boyfriend. Those friends also say that the group was celebrating the driver's graduation at a club and then got into some kind of argument. Police believe the victim's car was targeted. A possible break in the search for a missing Hampton, Virginia woman and her baby. A car belonging to 34-year-old Kier Johnson was discovered yesterday in Newport News, and police are going through that 2014 Kia Optima for clues. Johnson and her eight-month-old daughter have been missing since April 30th. Virginia State Police issued an Amber Alert to try and find them last week. Well, upset that someone would hang a noose at their school in Anne Arundel County, some parents took matters into their own hands this weekend. They used chalk to write positive messages on the walk outside of Crofton Middle School. I knew we had to do something, and so when a mom of a student here at Crofton Middle, um, Sherlyn Larson, reached out to me and said, what if we chalk the walk? I was like, that would be amazing. And um, I think it's just a really visible symbol of, of the positivity and kindness that this community really represents. A day after the discovery, two 19 year olds were arrested for hanging that noose outside of Crofton Middle School. The cyber attack that ravaged the US and Europe last Friday, well, it's spreading again. In Japan, at least 2,000 machines in 600 locations got hit. Now, the hackers are demanding 300 bucks in ransom, or they're threatening to destroy the user's data. Now, the attack could have been far worse if not for a pair of cybersecurity researchers. They discovered a kill switch that was hidden in the hacker's malware. Even though the kill switch has been activated, there were at the very least thousands and possibly even 100,000 infections that occurred before the kill switch was activated. The cyber attack described as the largest the world has ever experienced. It crippled Britain's health service Analysts warn what's happened so far is nothing compared to what might be coming. 
Now to the latest on the fallout following the firing of FBI Director James Comey. Sources tell CBS News a replacement could be named as early as this week. But some Democrats are saying not so fast. They're threatening to block Comey's successor unless a special prosecutor is named to investigate possible ties between the Trump campaign and Russia. The need to have someone that's independent and far away from any of the actors to get to the bottom of this is so important. The full Senate will get a briefing on Comey's firing on Thursday from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Arguments are done in a federal appeals court over the latest challenge to President Trump's travel ban. While demonstrators were outside the courthouse in Seattle, lawyers were inside arguing the merits of Hawaii's challenge to the executive order. That ban would suspend the nation's refugee program and temporarily ban new visas for citizens from six majority Muslim countries. There are all kinds of lawsuits pending against this order, and it's not clear when the judges will rule. It is expected, though, that one of those lawsuits will be appealed to the Supreme Court. Tracking Metro and five stations at the eastern end of the Orange Line will be shut down starting tomorrow. That's when Safe Track Surge 15 begins. New Carrollton, Landover, Cheverly, Deanwood, and the Minnesota Avenue stations will all be closed for the next month. Buses will shuttle passengers from those closed stations to the stadium armory. Stop. So, it is the biggest Wizards slash Bullets game since the late 70s. Our Washington Wizards, bam, in a game seven with the Celtics, a spot on the line for the Eastern Conference Finals. Can they do it? Our Frank Hanrahan made the trip up to Boston for what we <laughs> hope will be a Wizards win. They got to really have their heads in the game, though, Frank. Yeah, they do. They got to bring it. Speaking of heads, I'm a very, um, very uh, testing the waters here in Boston with his hat, uh, walking down the street and getting all sorts of looks, thumbs down, go Celtics. So I wanted to get the pulse of the Celtics nation and brace them perhaps for getting their hearts broken here tonight. All right, guys, what do you think of my hat? Nice and, and snug? It's okay. It kind of looks a little big on you, though. <laughs> DC is in the house. All right, gentlemen. Uh, let's play some word association. You guys are from the area, obviously. Yep. You're from Beantown. You guys like Beantown? Sure. Is it okay to call it Beantown? People say, ah, I don't like it being called Title Town. <laughs> All right, ready? Word association. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin Do of course, Dunkin' Donuts in Boston. Uh, John Wall or Isaiah Thomas? Uh, John Wall. Redskins or Patriots? Patriots. I, I mean, we, we, we know who won it last year, so <laughs> Patriots. And, and what's going to happen tonight? Celtics. Close game, but Isaiah's going to take over. Hopefully it'll OT and Celtics. Um, I'm going to go the other way. I'll take the Wizards tonight. You guys want to have a, a, a gentleman's bet? Gentleman's bet. All right. Yeah, Best okay. of luck tonight, guys. That's what we like to see. Perhaps some overconfidence on the Celtics fan base's part. We'll see tonight at 8 o'clock as the Wizards try to knock off Boston here at TD Garden in Beantown and pull <laughs> off an upset and move on to the Eastern Conference Finals. Guys, let's send it back to you in D.C. I think we got this. They just they know what they got to do. We'll see what happens. We're pulling for them, that's yeah. for sure. We'll be checking in with you later for uh, an update on the win, okay? How about that? Thanks, Frank. We have a well-deserved blast of summer on the way this week. The Sultan of Sunshine, Ooh. Tom Rashad. <laughs> I I mean, each day we, we come, up, we come up with something new like for you that. every day. <laughs> Out on the weather terrace with more. Uh, it's pretty apt today. I mean, just a spectacular evening. And if you're going to take a little walk after dinner uh, with the dog, it'll still be 65. This is 10 o'clock tonight on Futurecast, but 59 in Gaithersburg and also Manassas and still 61 in Hagerstown. We'll come back. We'll talk about the 90s and if any record highs are in jeopardy. Thanks, Top. How about this one? Separation, celebration. Yep, it's a new trend, and uh, yeah, those are divorce cakes. May divorce be with you. And it was an argument over a different kind of cake that led to this family being forced off a plane.